Hey friends, today's gonna be a pretty different lesson because we're not using Ableton Live. What? We're actually using Audacity. Audacity is a waveform editor. So I find it really interesting that a lot of artists will spend days, weeks, months on a song. They'll export the song out of Ableton Live and send it either to a mastering engineer or they'll just put it on the internet and that's the end of it. Um, something that I think is really difficult to achieve is something known as objectivity. The ability to step outside of your head and have a, a viewpoint of the music that you've made um, without any any pre-existing thoughts about it, okay? Like, uh, I think the snare drum's perfect, blah, 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 so on and so forth, whatever. Um, what looking at your waveform will do will give you a, a couple more cues to potentially maybe some changes you could make in your mix to make it better. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at this first at this first uh, audio. So this first waveform, um, some of you that have been doing this for a while obviously can, can see what's happening here. What we've got is we've got some serious clipping, some crazy peaks and some other stuff. And I, this is a, an example of a mix that has gotten away from the artist that sent this to me. This is, this is obviously a mix that has a lot of parts that are really kind of different in volume, just, just a lot of peaks. And so the first thing that you want to look for is obviously this kind of situation. Like, like what is happening that's causing these parts to be just so drastically different? And, and, and also uh, paying attention to the, you know, the master bus, they would have seen obviously that this was either in the red or they were hitting their limiter really hard. One way or another, this is the kind of thing you want to look for. Um, and when we're talking about objectivity, it's very simple to see that maybe... What you do is you you know you're listening to this part on repeat, okay, and you this part's perfectly mixed. Maybe it sounds just great, but you're not listening to the parts uh, together, and and you've lost that objectivity because you're focusing on that one part. This is this is a common occurrence, okay. So let's go over to a mix that might be a little bit more dialed, okay. Now this is a different mix, obviously. This is a little bit more, I would say, potentially prepared for. Uh, a, a mastering engineer or something like that, but there's there's still some glaring issues going on here. One of the main glaring issues is that, like with lots of material, you have a situation that is just extremely loud. This is this is kind of like the end, and this is the beginning. And before some of you people nail me to the cross for saying, like this area is, you know, I want to make dynamic music. Well, I make really dynamic music. Well, potentially that's what you're doing. Maybe you're making. Um, you're making film score music, you're making orchestral music, you're mixing orchestral music, or maybe, you know, you're making video game music or something like that. This might not apply to you as much, okay? What I'm talking about are people that are using, that are making music, preparing for streaming services. Uh, what you're going to run into when you have situations where they're extremely even, even, let's just take, not even look at this part right here, let's just look at this part through the song. Th if I were to amplify this section right here, um, and bring it up to, let's just give it 10, let's give it, yeah, like 7 dB. What we're doing is, is you can see that the, the average levels between this part and this part, the limiter, even if we take, we're, we're gain reducing and gain reducing and gain reducing, let's say we take it all the way down to even into this RMS level, this is never going to get touched by the limiter, which isn't necessarily bad. But what's going to happen is, is that if this part was just the tiniest bit louder, we're talking like a couple, a dB maybe, maybe a dB and a half, what will happen is, is that you're going to get a more homogenized audio signal, and when your music is being played up against other music, whether it be rock and roll, EDM, pop music, whatever, it's, it's not going to lose the listener. I mean, a lot of these people are using cell phones, laptops, and things like that to listen to your music. This is a really good example of when you should really pay attention. Now, obviously, you know, what, this was the original audio that I got. This ending part is obviously just way out. And I think what happened was objectivity was lost. This uh, artist was was working on this part uh, over and over and over again. Maybe they had the loop bar looking at this part, and they rarely ever went back and said, oh, wow, the part right before it is just extremely quiet. No amount of compression and limiting on this track is going to get this to be to a level where it sounds homogenized enough for driving in a car, you know what I mean, with the ambient noise around, you know what I mean? This is, and this is, this is something that you could do very simply by, you know, potentially opening a utility plugin and turning up just this section, okay? Uh, you know, another thing you can do with Audacity is you can use, is this is a really crude <laughs> example right here, but you can use the amplify effect. You just select the part, go to amplify, and add yourself a dB, okay? 
and maybe that's all that you needed to do. What I'm trying to show you is that this is this is giving me as an artist objectivity looking at my waveforms, okay? I still do this. I still have this issue where I'll focus in on parts and I won't look at, like, especially if it's a longer song, you know, it's like, you know, five to seven minutes long, I won't be looking at the audio uh, to really to really show what I'm doing wrong or, you know, wh what, I, what I could be doing better in the mix and, and how, you know, not only should we be balancing our snares and kicks and guitars and keyboards and vocals and all that other stuff, we should also be balancing part to part, okay? And again, I don't mean that you can't make dynamic music. In fact, dynamic music is how you get things done, in my opinion, when it comes to moving energy. Like, you want things to be uh, soft and then loud and stuff like that, but this is an extreme example, okay? We, we, have, we have taken it kind of way too far. We've also got some clipping uh, problems here, okay? So another thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in on this part that's clipped, and uh, I'm going to show you some tricks that you can use to fix that problem too. So uh, something you can do with Audacity that's nice is you can click and select an area just by clicking and dragging. And when you zoom, it'll actually snap to that area. Okay. So what I can do with a wave editor that, you, that that's, you can do this with Ableton Live, you can do this with a lot of things, but but what's nice about this wave editor is is the surgicalness that you can get into this this waveform, okay? I can just keep zooming and I can get to this clipping spot right here, okay? I can just keep zooming in, all right, until I get to this section that's really clipped out, okay? Something I can easily do is just select a very small amount of this audio and just go to effect, amplify, and I'm actually going to go the opposite direction. I'm going to pull down about 3 dB. Now let's just do two, okay? And now I'm back within the realm of, of acceptability in this section, okay? So I can just zoom all the way out and take a look. And as you can see, I've tamed that transient. You're never going to hear that, okay? Just so you know, you're never going to hear that. These wave editors uh, nowadays, they all interpolate between... And what that means is it it'll make up a couple samples between the end of your effect so that you don't hear a click or a pop when that happens. Now, if you do something extreme... Okay, you might hear that click and pop, so you got to be careful with this thing. I'm going to go ahead and load up another audio file just to just to show you that uh, how to do this. Now let's take a look at, at this waveform. Okay, this waveform is not dynamic. Like there's, you can see this average RMS level, uh, this lighter blue. It really doesn't really move around that much. So this is this is very compressed. This kind of looks like what you know a, a standard like EDM pre-master looks like. Uh, you get this, you know these. Uh, it is just not it's not going too many places but what i'm looking at is 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 the, this peak rms level and we have one pretty solid peak right here right so when i'm you know when when you're thinking about mastering music the the mastering engineer is going to have to do something about these big peaks okay if the mastering engineer is watching the needle or the gain reduction duck way down they're going to be like okay there's there's something going on they're going to keep going back over that they're listening to that peak they're listening they're looking at that gain reduction and if you have a lot of gain reduction happening sometimes you hear that and it's audible and what what a big peak like this can translate to when it comes to getting a loud mix out of your mastering engineer or even if you're doing your own self mastering is that if this peak is here and you're doing that big gain reduction you might not be able to set the settings where you want them and you, and it might actually result in you having a quieter mix Okay, so in this situation, there's a couple peaks that I could tame here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to select this area, okay? I'm going to just click zooming in, okay? And here is the here is the culprit right here, okay? So I can just keep kind of getting closer to it, all right? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this area, okay? And I'm just going to go to Effect, Amplify. I'm going to pull it down just a little bit. 2 dB, all right, and this and this time what we're going to do is we're just going to listen to this very short section, okay, and something you can do is you can select areas of time, actually, you know, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more, you can select areas of time, and you can hit uh, shift play and that will loop the part. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, as you can see, this big crash right here isn't clipping. There isn't any, anything wrong with it. And to prove that, I'm just going to undo this, let that peak happen again, select this area. And this is what it originally sounded like. Okay, so shift, shift play. Okay. So I'm going to redo 
this gain reduction that I just did, okay? And now let's listen to it. See, no clipping at all. So you don't need to be worried. Right? So you don't need to be worried about using this Amplify. The interpolation is going to, most of the time, fix any clicks or pops that you might make. So I could just go back through this entire audio, uh, this waveform, whoops. I could go through this waveform and I could just select different areas. Yeah, so basically when you're done with that, you can go to File, Export, okay? And you can actually export this as a fixed version of your original export. You could be like export underscore audacity or something, whatever, whatever you're going to call it. And this could be your actual pre-master. That way your audio is much more ready to be uh, mastered by an engineer. Um, let's also talk about another thing. Um, if you are self-mastering, um, I would recommend, even if you're using like, let's say you're using like one of Ableton's mastering chains or a limiter at the end of your, at the end of your, your chain or whatever, what you can do is you can turn that off and export the audio put it into an audio editor or a waveform editor and just take a look at it, okay? And just see if there's just some peaks or some crazy parts getting getting away from you. Because the other way, and I would I would even say maybe even one of the more superior ways to fix this is to, is to go in and look at the, the time where those big peaks happened or maybe where the part's too quiet or something like that and then just write it down in a little notebook, right? Just write it down and be like, okay, this part at this second marker is is whatever, okay? Take some notes, all right? Put those notes down, open Ableton Live, and then zoom into those areas and fix those areas afterwards, okay? You can also do that. It's a great way to just ensure that your mastering chain isn't going to be stressed, okay? To try to, like, tame what's going on, or it's not going to be stressed to try to get those quiet parts to be just a little bit louder. All right. Audacity's free. Download it. It's awesome. I use it all the time. And yeah, if you got uh, use out of this, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing. Um, so much love, everybody, and uh, happy waveform editing. Thanks. See ya.